Okay, welcome to lecture 30, chapter 7, section 4, uh, formal charges. Okay, formal charge is not charge. It is what charge the atom would have if it had as many electrons as it does in the bonded system. Uh, formal charge is a system that we've devised to uh, find out what is the best structure uh, a covalent compound can have, the best Lewis structure. Now, formal charge is easy enough to calculate. It's uh, let's see, formal charge is equal to number of valence electrons in a neutral atom minus number of electrons owned by bonded atom. So, for example, let's go ahead and look at carbon dioxide. You remember the last lecture I said it has this structure, double bonded to two oxygen atoms, one on either side. Each non-bonding pair counts entirely toward the atom that the non-bonding pair is on. No problem there. The bonds are a little bit more calculated, or a little more complicated, excuse me, such that each bond counts half toward each atom. Okay. So remember, each bond contains two electrons. So it splits those electrons evenly between the two atoms. Okay. So we've got one electron going this way to oxygen, one electron going over here to carbon. One this way, one that way. One this way, one that way. One this way, one that way. So how many electrons do we have in each and how many valence electrons did it start with? Okay, so oxygen starts with six valence electrons. Carbon starts with four. Then you subtract the number of electrons it owns there in the molecule. So looking at the oxygen down here on the left, we have two for that bond or non-bonding pair, two for that non-bonding pair, one for that bond, one for that bond. So 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 gives us 6. 6 minus 6 is 0. Carbon looks around itself. It sees four bonds, which means a total of four electrons. 4 minus 4 is 0. And then the oxygen on the right is the mirror image of the oxygen on the left. So it's just 6 minus 6 gives us 0. Hat tip. You want zeros for your formal charges. <laughs> so let's compare it to what if it was a uh, you know, three versus one. Right? Well, the reason we don't do that is because two, three, four, five means we have six minus five equals positive 1 for the oxygen on the left. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 minus 4 is still 0 for the carbon. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 6 minus 7 gives us negative 1 for the oxygen on the right. Uh, those numbers are not 0. <laughs> they're not incredibly far from 0, but they're not 0. You know, formal char or a, a molecule where everything is zero is preferred to one where you have non-zero numbers. So that leads us to the rules we have regarding uh, formal charge. One, all formal charges add up to the charge on the molecule. So you saw on both of those uh, carbon dioxides, they added up to zero. And 
Oxygen double bonded. Oops. Double bonded to carbon, double bonded to oxygen. Okay. That was you know, 0, 0, and 0. 0 plus 0 plus 0 equals 0. Okay. But in the same way, carbon triple and single bonded to oxygen gave us positive 1 and negative 1 and 0. But that adds up to be 0 just as well. Okay, so they're both viable. It's just that one is better than the other. Okay, so next up, get as close to zero as possible. Okay. Zeros are best. If you can't have zeros, then smaller numbers are better. Okay, uh, one is better than two, two is better than three, three is better than four. Get those formal charges as small as possible. And think of formal charge as being a way to measure the stress on the uh, atoms, how far away you're taking them from their neutral state. In other words, they want to look like nobility, but they want to live the same lives as before. You know, it's like a celebrity complaining about never having any privacy, right? Okay. Three. If you have zeros, or if you have non-zero numbers, excuse me, if you have non-zeros, put negative numbers on electronegative atoms, let's, say, let's call it more electronegative atoms, and put positive numbers on less electronegative atoms. Okay. So there will be examples of that in a minute. Uh, next up we have, well, finally I should say, don't put like charges on neighbors. Okay. Um, Formal charges are just like other charges. Put positive next to negative. Don't put positive by positive or negative by negative. Opposites attract. Like charges repel. Opposite formal charges are good. Like formal charges are bad. So now let's look at a couple more examples. First up, SCN minus. Okay. Thiocyanide. Thiocyanate, excuse me. So we can compare several things with this. Is it SCN or SNC or uh, uh, N, uh, let's see, NSC? Which one is in the middle, in other words? So S to C to N, 1 minus. Well, let's, actually, let's go ahead and clear up plenty of space. So we have 6 and 4 and 5 electrons from each of those minus the negative 1. Gives us a total of 16 electrons. S, C, N minus 4 electrons leaves us with 12. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 minus oops, 12 electrons and we're down to zero. We have to fill out uh, carbon's octet there in the middle, so we need to turn two non-bonding pairs into um, additional bonds. So that's where the choice comes in. It could be S, C, N, S, C, N, or S, C, N. Let's go ahead and put the uh, non-bonding pairs on there. We definitely need those in order to make sense of the formal charges. Okay. Now we need the valence electrons. Fortunately, we you know, already found them. They're up here. So 6 and 4 and 5. 6, 4, 5. 6, 4, 
Now, how many electrons does each atom see in this uh, compound? One, two, three, four, five, six. Formal charge of zero. One, two, three, four. Formal charge of zero. One, two, three, four, five, six. Formal charge of negative one. And that's what we should expect. Okay, because it's a it's a polyatomic ion. It has a negative charge. So so far, so good. I mean, at, at the very least, the numbers are adding up in the way we want them to. So now we come over here to the next one. What does sulfur see? One, two, three, four, five. Positive one. Carbon has one, two, three, four, so it still has a zero. And nitrogen has one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Oof, negative two. So the, the charges still add up to negative one, but uh, this one is just right out, okay? Uh, positive one, zero, negative two, no good. Okay, I mean, zero, zero, negative one is far better. Now we come over here and we look at uh, the one on the right. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on sulfur for a charge of negative one, a formal charge of negative one, excuse me. Carbon still has one, two, three, four for a total of zero. And nitrogen has one, two, three, four, five for a formal charge of zero. So they add up to negative one. Huzzah. Okay, now the question is, which one is better? Triple bond on nitrogen or a double bond on each of them? Well, you have to remember the rule. Put the negative formal charge on the more electronegative element. So which is more electronegative, sulfur or carbon? So you hop on over to the periodic table, and you see we have nitrogen over here, second row, uh, fourth from the right, sulfur is third row, third from the right. Uh, that might be difficult to judge, but sulfur is closer to the upper right-hand corner. It's just basically one step away from fluorine. Okay, so it is going to be more electronegative than nitrogen. Just rule of thumb. So that means we want our negative formal charge to be on sulfur rather than on nitrogen. And this guy over here on the right is our preferred structure for thiocyanate. You can do the same thing to test um, uh, having nitrogen at the center or having carbon at the center very easily. So uh, sulfur, nitrogen, carbon... Sulfur, nitrogen, carbon. Trying to draw these out really quick. And sulfur, nitrogen, carbon. So this is 6 minus 5 for positive 1. 5 minus 4 for positive 1. 4 minus 7 for negative 3. Ooh, that's awful. <laughs> All right, so 6 minus 6 gives us 0, 5 minus 4 gives us positive 1, and 4 minus 6 gives us negative 2. Also awful, compared to, at the very least, what we had in the other structure. Finally, 6 minus 7 gives us negative 1, 4 minus 5. Oops, I got that backwards. I think I'm doing it over and over again. 5 minus 4 gives us positive 1. And 4 minus 5 gets us negative 1. Okay, that, that's better than the others. I mean, this one had positive charges next to each other. Okay. But frankly, none of these is ideal. That's because none of them really gets <laughs> very close to zeros. So this one would also be out. Nitrogen just isn't going to go with the middle of this molecule. Drawing molecules as quick as I can. Four 
four six five four six five four six five. All right. So four minus seven, ooh, negative three. Six minus four is positive two. Five minus five is zero. Oh, that's ugly, hideous, awful. I hate it. Three and two, oof. Four minus six is negative two. Six minus four is positive two. And five minus six is negative one. Ugh. Four minus five is negative one. Six minus four is positive two. And five minus seven is negative two. Yeah. Sulfur is definitely not going to go at the middle of this compound. So our best bet is sulfur, carbon, nitrogen. A single bond to sulfur and a triple bond to nitrogen and an overall charge of negative one. Because that gets us formal charges of six minus seven is negative one, four minus four is zero, and five minus five is zero. And this gives you kind of a trend, something you see over and over again. Carbon likes having four bonds because that gets it a formal charge of zero. Okay, four bonds, no non-bonding pairs. Nitrogen likes having three bonds and one non-bonding pair because that gives it a formal charge of zero. They can violate that, okay? and various uh, compounds violate that in different ways, but um, they don't necessarily like it all that much. Similarly, oxygen likes having two bonds and two non-bonding pairs. That gets it a formal charge of zero. That's just the sort of pattern you can see a lot. Um, and it's justified thanks to formal charges. Let's uh, work out another example really quick. Dinitrogen monoxide. Is it going to be NNO or NON? Well, first off, we have 2 times 5 electrons plus 6 electrons equals 16 electrons. So N, N, O this is a 4, then this 12, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And then, very similarly, N, O, N. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It's a neutral compound. You don't have to worry about uh, uh, putting brackets on it or anything. Now, we are going to see some uh, bonding. But is it going to be double bonds to either side, a triple bond in one direction or the other? Okay. So, here are the six compounds we get to look at. N, N, O. N, N, O, N, N, O. Double bonds. They're not double bonds, non bonding pairs is what I'm drawing in now. Now let's do the other side. N, O, N, N, O, N, N. Well, I don't need to do the other one. It's perfectly symmetrical. So it's only five compounds, really. Now, non-bonding pairs. Okay. So now, let's find formal charges. Five, five, six. So this nitrogen on the left here sees one, two, three, four, five. There's zero. Five minus four is one. 6 minus 7 is negative 1. 5 minus 6 is negative 1. 5 minus 4 is positive 1. 6 minus 6 is 0. 5 minus 7 is negative 2. 5 minus 4 is positive 1. 6 minus 5 is positive 1. 5 minus 5 is 0. 6 minus 4 is positive 2. Oof. 5 minus 
you know what, I'm just going to stop right there. The fact that oxygen gets a positive two formal charge. Oxygen is way more electronegative than nitrogen. It's not going to be the center of the molecule. Okay, because this one right here would also be six minus four is positive two. Okay, that's just, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> so we're left to decide between the three on the left. Okay, so the bottom one, negative two, positive one, positive one. No way, not going to happen. So the other two have zero, plus one, minus one. Much better. So either way, the nitrogen in the middle has a positive one charge. Unavoidable. Is the minus one going to be better on oxygen or nitrogen? Well, it's going to be better on the more electronegative element, and that's oxygen. So it's also not going to be this guy. It's this one right here. Nitrogen, triple bonded to nitrogen, single bonded to oxygen. That is the structure of dinitrogen monoxide. Like I said, uh, even though nitrogen prefers the triple bond and a single non-bonding pair, it can do otherwise. It's not perfectly happy, but it still has the octet. It's content, just not ideal. Now let's talk about something a little bit different. It's called resonance. Now we've already mentioned resonance before, but this is a different kind of resonance. It still deals with electrons though. Okay. Last time we were talking about electrons in terms of being in a subshell and looking like um, electrons in orbitals nearby and that making them happier and lower energy. Okay. That's one kind of resonance. Now we're talking about a different kind of resonance. This is the structure of carbonate. One of the oxygens is double bonded to carbon. The other two oxygens have a single bond to carbon each. Why does this oxygen get the special treatment and these two only get the single bonds? Well, there's nothing special about the oxygen up top. It's absolutely identical with the other two oxygens. So there's absolutely no reason why it should get the double bonds and not, you know, this guy down here on the left or this guy over here on the right. They, they Each one could get the double bond just as easily. So because that oxygen isn't special, you, you might expect that when you look at it, um, you would get something like this. Carbon bound to oxygen bound to oxygen. I'm going to leave off the non-bonding pairs for the moment. Oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. Carbon, oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. So you would expect, possibly, something like this. Where you look at it and the double bond isn't confined to a single um, uh, oxygen. Okay? So what can happen is that you know this oxygen down here on the right might decide it's tired of having a formal charge of negative one. This double or this non-bonding pair jumps in to form a double bond, and this bond jumps out, becomes a non-bonding pair, giving you the uh, situation you have in the middle. And then the exact same thing could happen with this guy. He's tired of having a formal charge of negative one, jumps in, pushing out this double bond and giving himself a double bond. I mean, no reason that sort of thing couldn't happen. Okay. In other words, uh, the, double, the oxygens sort of fight amongst themselves for who gets the double bond. So it's an interesting hypothesis, and they looked it up, by which I mean to say they actually looked at the molecule. Okay. One of the methods you can use to study bonds is with spectroscopy, where you shine light on a compound and see uh, what wavelengths get absorbed. You know, it's sort of the opposite of measuring an emission spectrum. And what they sort of expected to see was you know, that uh, you know you have the light and it gets absorbed here, 
and then it gets absorbed here. And they were expecting, you know, a carbon oxygen single bond here, a carbon oxygen double bond there, it gets absorbed more strongly for the single bond because there's two of them. But that's not what they saw. What they saw was a single very strong peak in between these two. In other words, there was only one kind of bond. All three carbon-oxygen bonds are all exactly the same. And they're all somewhere in between a single bond and a double bond. So let's go back to those pictures of the carbon, of the carbonate. Okay, so carbon, double bond to oxygen, single bond to each of the other two. And three pictures. So they looked at the carbonate, expecting to see each of these pictures one at a time. Instead, what they saw was that all three were existing simultaneously. All three versions of the molecule happen at the same time. Each one of these pictures is true all at once. It's not each one in turn. All of them are true at the same time. That is resonance. When you have multiple places for a double bond to sit in a molecule like this, then when it can you know, hop around from place to place to place, then it happens in all of them at the same time. That's where they exist. So the actual picture for carbonate is more like this. Oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. And this double bond lives in all three places at once. And instead of being a single bond or a double bond, it's more like one and a third. And the reason this is important is because resonance equals stability. When you have some form of resonance in a molecule, it makes the molecule more stable, it makes the molecule happier. Okay? Resonance is a good thing. Here in the molecular form, just as it was in the, uh, in, in the atomic orbitals. So let's look at a few more examples real quick. First up, sulfate, SO4 two minus. This will be informed by formal charges. And so, sulfur has six. There are four oxygens, giving us six each. And we have the negative two charge. So we have a total of 30, 32 electrons. All right, so sulfur Oxygen, 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 oxygen. Putting on the non-bonding pairs. Okay. And that is all of our electrons. So, this is not the, the structure of sulfate. I'll just tell you that right now. Because each oxygen has a formal charge of negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one. Whereas sulfur, six minus four, positive two. Okay. So that is an ugly, ugly way to try and draw that molecule. But what you can do is you can get rid of a non-bonding pair on one of these oxygens, turn it into a double bond. Suddenly that oxygen is six minus six is zero. Now sulfur, because it has five bonds, is six minus five, is only positive one. So it's happier, this molecule, but it's not perfect. So what we might as well do is pull off another non-bonding pair, turn it into a, another double bond. Now this oxygen has a formal charge of zero, and sulfur is six minus six is zero. This is the actual structure of sulfate. It has two double bonds and two single bonds. And of course it has resonance as well because it's O, 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 O. <laughs> and, uh, let's 
see, there should be one more. No, several more. Uh, the, let's see. There we go. I believe that's all of them. <laughs> so it has a lot of resonant structures going on there. So sulfate is a very happy molecule, just in terms of resonance. There are other factors that can be considered, but we won't be going into those. We can also consider nitrite, NO2, 1 minus. So nitrogen gives us 5, oxygen gives us 2 times 6 for 12 more, then it has a negative 1 charge for a total of 18 electrons. Nitrogen is in the middle, down to oxygens, so minus 4 gives us 14, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. We have two left to spend. They're going to go on nitrogen. And let's see, 2, 4, 6. Nitrogen needs two more to be happy. This is the structure of nitrite. Am I sure about that? Well, 6 minus 6 is 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 minus 5 is 0. 6 minus 7 is negative 1. But this isn't the complete structure because the two oxygens are perfectly identical. No reason to give the double bond to the oxygen on the left. So the full structure requires us to draw the resonance. Nitrogen oops, double bonded to the oxygen on the right. So if you want to draw the structure of nitrite, you have to draw both of these to include the resonance. You can't really fully explain or understand the structure without resonance. Now let's look at an example of a class of compounds. We're going to look at methanoate. Methanoate, or formate, is the smallest of the carboxylic acids. That is a class of compounds that you see in organic chemistry, also in biochemistry. Okay. When it's like this, H-C-O-O-H, it's called formic acid. The reason it's called that is because of the, word, of the French word for me, uh, sorry, there's an O there, or U. Uh, for me is the French word for ant, and formic acid is what ants inject into you with when they bite you. Hence, formic acid. Now, you take away this guy right here, and you get, well, let's see. You take away that proton, and you get methanoate, or formate. And it looks like this. And by now, you should be accustomed. There's no reason to have the double bond on one oxygen, not the other. So you draw the resonance. C, O, O. All of the carboxylic acids have this kind of resonance when they've lost their acidic proton. Uh, the H plus coming off right here. That's why they're acids. That's why they can lose that acidic proton is because they have this resonance making the negative ion that much more stable. And speaking of organic chemistry, one of the more famous uh, examples of resonance, one of the, in fact, I believe it's the first discovered, is benzene. Uh, benzene is C6H6, and it is a ring of carbons. Each carbon is bound to a single hydrogen. And then you get three double bonds. And there's no particular reason to have the double bonds, you know, here, here, and here. So you get resonance. C, 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 C. C, H, 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 
And now you can put the double bonds like this. Benzene is a very, very uh, popular sort of organic solvent. But also, you get rings like this all the time in biochemistry. They're called aromatic rings. And rather than draw all the carbons and all the hydrogens and all the double bonds and all the resonance like that, what they do is they abbreviate it like this. A six-membered ring, a hexagon, with a circle in the middle. Where that circle represents the resonance between these two structures. So benzene is a very stable molecule. And that's it for formal charges. That's it for resonance. See you in the next lecture.